And we begin with some brand new images just into our newsroom of a downed tree on Highway 18 in Issaquah. And you see the damage there. That tree is blocking all eastbound lanes. I'm Greg Copeland. And I'm Jessica Janner Castro. Take a look here at the picture that we got tonight showing just how dangerous some areas have become. This is from the East Pierce Firefighters Twitter account. They say this is on State Route 162 in Ording. And we have teams across the region right now. Britt Moore is in Woodenville. Tony Black is near Ording. We want to begin, though, with King 5's Ted Land, who's just down the road from that fallen tree live in Issaquah with the very latest on a rescue that we've mentioned throughout the day. Hi guys, Issaquah Creek is still raging tonight, but good news, the water level is actually going down from its peak. A lot of people who live in a nearby apartment complex are now safe and dry after a harrowing day when the creek rose to their doorsteps. Eastside Fire and Rescue helped evacuate adults, children, and animals trapped by the floodwaters. Rescuers at one point inflated a raft and then used that to reach the apartments. The creek also submerged several cars and trucks. Clearly, some people were caught off guard by this. Much of the rainfall came down overnight early this morning. And by daybreak, this quickly escalated into an emergency situation. And all of a sudden, the power went off. And then less than a half hour later, we had the fire department coming around, knocking on everyone's door and saying, gather up your stuff. It's time to go. And there's just water everywhere. You can't get anywhere. But these people, I just, I feel terrible for. <laughs> so the water's gone down and left some damage in its wake. And it's also closed a lot of nearby roads, including the bridge that we're standing on, Newport Way. This has been closed all day. If you're coming through here, you have to detour around it because there's still a lot of standing water uh, down the road here that's blocking the roadway. That's where you see that orange sign. And if you're driving through Issaquah, you'll see some other side roads like this closed with more on the rain on the way. Expect further detours in the coming days. Live in Issaquah, Ted Land, King 5 News. Ted, thank you. Uh, we wanted to show you this drone video that we have here tweeted out by the Pierce County Sheriff's Office. This is what it looked like over South Prairie Creek in the Ording area. Sheriff's Office says the road is flooding there and drivers should also avoid this area. Mm, and boy, that rain just keeps coming as we're looking at the radar right now over the past two hours. Not really getting a break. Some of you in the rain shadow continue to get that break, but some of the rain at times has been heavy. Uh, it's a little bit light to medium is what we'll call it from Raymond to Hump Tulips. Look at Greenwater, Enumclaw, Carbonado, some heavy rain, Snoqualmie Pass as well. Uh, the snowfall will drop tomorrow, but meantime, we still have a whole lot of snow in the mountains. Sammamish, Snoqualmie, you can see all of the uh, darker greens with the heavier rain. As we head up to the north, it's a little more scattered not quite uh, at Camino Island. Bellingham to the north, you've got a bit of a break as well. And then as we look up the Olympic Peninsula, you've got most of the rain right along the coast, a bit of a break for Nia Bay, Port Angeles, some light rain for you. So as we look at Futurecast, this is going to be the story through about 12 o'clock where the southwest corner of the state will get some heavy rain. Everyone else some moderate downpo uh, downpours and then some pretty heavy rain right along the foothills. 7 o'clock tomorrow, this does turn to scattered showers, and it looks like we have another line of heavy rain moving through during the afternoon. Now, King 5's Tony Black joins us live along the Carbon River in Pierce County near Ordon. Hey there, Tony. Hey there, yeah, we're here right on the Carbon River, right near there, Pierce County. I want to show you there's a road close sign here behind me. Actually, just a moment ago, a driver came down this road. You can see it's completely pitch black down there. It took him about two or three minutes to actually make his way around. I'm assuming because there is water all over the roadway. This area is closed here. There's a road just over to my left there that is also closed and has a lot of water on the road. We've seen several cars kind of coming up here and having to turn around. This is just a piece of what has been a rather hectic day for a lot of areas around Pierce County as they deal with all of this flooding. More heavy rain contributed to flooding all over Pierce County Thursday. The Pierce County Sheriff's Department tweeted these photos showing a landslide that blocked much of State Route 165 between Wilkinson and the town of Carbonado. Nicole sent us this video of Wilkinson Creek looking like anything but. And look at this drone video, also from the Pierce County Sheriff's Department, that shows the flood from South Perry Creek in Ording. And just near Sumner on Houston Road, a portion of that road had to be closed as water from the Puyallup River crept over.
So this is usually one of the more dangerous times to be out on the road, in particular when it's so dark out. You can see there's really nothing down that road. You wouldn't even be able to see it if we didn't have some extra lights set up there behind us. So we were going to continue on and kind of see how far we can go, but obviously we came right up to this road close sign, and that is as far as we were able to go because it's just simply not safe. And that is something that authorities are also reminding all of the drivers that you know that take their time to not try and drive around these road close signs. It is just not worth it. It can be very difficult for first responders to get to you. We'll send it back to you guys now. All right, Tony, thank you. In Snohomish County, things are slowly deteriorating. One of the biggest concerns is the Pilchuck River, which so far is staying within its banks, but there's still water over the road in a lot of places with some of the biggest concerns in the southwestern parts of the county, such as Linwood, Edmonds, Mount Lake Terrace. Uh, the Evergreen State Fairgrounds is now offering to take in animals, specifically livestock, just to get them out of the way of any flooding. We have 420 horse stalls and then we have a sheep barn that has stalls set up as well so we can hold small livestock as well, um, probably in excess of 100. So if you need to bring any livestock in, we do have more information on our website. Just go to king5.com. And on the border of Snohomish County and King, some folks in Woodenville right now working to keep their homes dry. Britt Moore is there and joining us live. Hi, Britt. Yeah, the rain really hasn't let up here at all here in Woodenville, and that's a problem for at least two homeowners who live on both sides of a culvert off of Little Bear Creek. They say the culvert is just simply too small and can't handle all of this rain, and it's really causing some major issues. This is one that comes down here, and it joins with Little Bear. And this is my patio. Diana Galanti has lived on this property for 35 years. So the water, the water was up, up to here, right along there. You can kind of see the edge of it. She says a culvert along Little Bear Creek is causing a mess. And it's only 10 feet wide, and so the water can't get through it. Only so much water can go through the culvert, and the rest of the water goes off to the sides and backs up and does this. This is her driveway, but it looks like a river. Get out my shovel every time it rains really, really hard. Something she's using more often these days. Hey, maybe five times over the past 35 years, but two times so far this winter because of all of our rain. When the rain just doesn't seem to let up, she gets the worst of it. The culvert actually makes the water back up on her side of the street. Galanti's neighbor, Rosa Maria Macias. So it's a bit more metered on our side, which is great for us and terrible for her. As for a solution, Galanti says. We have all kinds of ideas. Most of them are pretty expensive. In the meantime. Being the awareness that some of us who live close in or even in the city along these nice little creeks can have this happen to them. And uh, so uh, my heart goes out. Yeah, the rain again, pretty consistent tonight here in Woodenville. Neighbors I spoke to near that culvert off of Little Bear Creek say, of course, they're preparing for more, I guess, uh, unstable ground and soil, maybe some trees that could topple over and, of course, more flooding. For now, we are live in Woodenville tonight. Britt Moore, King 5 News. All right, Britt, thank you. Several school districts are already making some changes for tomorrow because of the flooding and all the continued rain. Ording will be closed tomorrow. Eatonville, Issaquah, Lake Washington, and White River will all start two hours late. We will post any additional changes on our website and also on the King 5 app. The King 5 weather app, by the way, is made for days like this. You will be able to check live radar. You can track the rain. Quick and easy to download right to your smartphone. All you have to do is text the word app to 206-448-4545, and we will send you a link. 